hello, hello. Welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, I know it seemed like an abrupt cut last time, and it kind of was, but uh, if you're wondering why we're not in that cutscene again, it's because the cutscene was pretty much over. The only thing you really missed was Chai News. Uh, he gave a thumbs up and a confident like smile or whatever, and then we got the quest complete box and got to take our reward and... I figured it really wasn't worth uh, starting right there exactly, or trying to start right there exactly. So, if that's ruined your enjoyment of Chai News and this Let's Play, then, well, you're just going to have to grow up someday. And or just watch better Let's Plays. I mean, there's plenty better ones out there. You know? so if you're this deep in, I assume that you don't, you don't, you aren't bothered by these abrupt breaks. This is a fun little portion of the quest. If you've forgotten since last time, or if you're completely new for some reason somehow in the middle of season five of a, you know, five chapters of game, or five expansions of game, or whatever, uh, you know. But, uh, Chai News is trying to, or has a way that he's going to appropriate some, some talus to, uh, enact his plan as the new mayor of Yulemore. The words come out eventually. They're just hard. That's as may be. That must be like the British way of saying, be that as it may. Lookout for Chinese. Will we be able to see that shoe bill anywhere? I think we're going to have to do this a, a couple times. This time you've got some monsters in the fray. We 
can't zoom in or out, so I don't think that the shoe bill's gonna be anywhere. Did Kaishir just do a, a female only, a female Makote only emote? I don't think guys had that emote. I hate how this Rogadine is like, well, my judgment is all that matters, or whatever, and it's like, what what the fuck have you ever done, Rogadine, dude? Like, I know you were, like, the previous advisor, but, like, what have you done in the interim? You know, like, you've been up in Amity with your thumb up your ass? Like, come on, dude. <laughs> Uh, form a line and make for your more. I wonder if the way the guitar is strummed and this, you know, inspirational music is a reference to any other sort of like lay motif in other Final Fantasies or in other uh, games or music mediums. I don't think it is, but I don't know. Just there's something about it. Talos! Call the guard! Stop! 
Stay back! All of you! But of course I'm back. You didn't see. Yeah, <gasps> there is. I, I got. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh dear. We should hug him so hard he passed out. <laughs> When out applying healing magic. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry, my darling. It's just the sight of you filled me with such joy. I couldn't help myself. Dooley Chai confirmed for ex bodybuilder. Oh, no, no, it, it's all right, dear. I, I should have just come out and said what it was I was intending instead of entrusting the task to a hastily scribbled letter. Does that mean you'll do it? Well, I'm here, aren't I? I mean, not, not, not that my absence signified any unwillingness, you understand? Oh, no, naught could be further from the truth. I only left to enlist the aid of the former mayor's senior advisor. And now that I have it, I believe I am ready to take office. gonna crush his spine again? Yeah, yeah, she's gonna crush his spine again. Damn it! Please! Like we can target anyone else. Well, that's that. Moving forward, huh? Yeah, yeah, sure thing. I've been I've been expected to, to attend political meetings before. I would might as well just teleport straight in. Oh, he's gonna give it in Vathrizo chambers then, huh? I guess that is like the mayor's room or whatever. Huh. 
Um... <clears throat> Go on, dear. <coughs> Thank you all for gathering here today. Uh, but before going any further, could I... Could I ask the free citizens of Yulmore to look around? It is a sight none of us would ever have seen under Lord Forthree's rule. Not only do we stand in the familiar presence of those we once called the bonded, but today we welcome the peoples of the derelicts and Gate Town too. Today we welcome the warriors of darkness, come to bear witness to Yulmore's new beginning. As you know, an election was recently held, at the end of which I had the honor of being chosen to succeed Lord Vothry. You place great faith in me. And I promise to do my utmost to live up to your expectations. And I will seek always to carry out the duties of this office with integrity and fairness. Always, I say, but not forever. Let it be known that I do not intend to hold this post indefinitely. I consider myself but an acting mayor, who will serve only for the interim, while Yulmore is reshaped according to a new set of values. No longer can we think of ourselves as divided as the free and the bonded, citizens and non-citizens. The systems put in place by Lord Vorthry must be undone. But even as we tear down the old, we must give thought to the new, to what manner of nation Yulmore should become. Whatever the answer may be, it cannot be decided by one man alone. And so I propose that an open forum be held that we might all discuss how best to strive towards a better future. However, there can be no talk of the morrow unless we first address the issues of today. Securing new sources of food, rebuilding relations with our neighbors, re-establishing industry. There is much and more that needs to be done. Too much for a mere man of business. And so I pledge instead to do everything in my power to ensure our city's security and stability while we all work together to see these problems solved. The road before us will not be easy, and I know full well how daunting the prospect of honest labor may seem to some of you. But we must accept the reality of our circumstances. We must move forward. This much we owe to ourselves and to the brave heroes who risked their lives to bring back the night. Once we have shored up our city's foundations and regained some semblance of normality, let us reconvene to speak of the future. Until then, I humbly ask that you lend me and each other your strength for Yulmore!
Seems legit. I guess you can't say that we got a thankless job. I'm not sure if we ever come back to, to talking to the actual, like, government going on here. I'm pretty sure stuff starts to spiral pretty quickly, and Yulmore sort of becomes an afterthought. Although you can do, uh, like, weekly deliveries to Kaishir or something like that. And there's, like, a little side storyline with that. throw away some of this antiquity stuff because uh, the Admiral 450 gear isn't really worth worthwhile. Don't really need those either, so... Vows of Virtue, Deeds of Cruelty. I think that was the patch name for 5.1. So this is like the last quest or something. Oh, so now we go back to the Presterium and... Yep. Oh, wait, what was it? Can I hear what you say? Another patch for Final Fantasy comes out on the 8th of December, and... 
so <laughs> I'm gonna re it looks like I'm gonna reach the end of of the, where the let's play can actually advance to within the next week or so and then then like a few days later I'll just have to pick it right back up for like a couple more <laughs> a couple more videos no rest for the righteous She'll be fine, Alpha Node. Significant discovery, you say? I like how Alpha Nod said, like, Master Shao is elected by popular vote. Like, while that's technically true, they didn't really have an, any other voting system in place. Inviolable link twixt mind and soul, huh? Well, oh, okay. technique with which you have personal experience, huh? Seems legit. Of course, I will. Of course, of course. I do know we're going to have some cutscene pasta happen whenever we go back to Tataru. So, let's see what we can do about actually queuing into one of these uh, level 80 dungeons. Oh, hey, look, we got the twinning instantly. How about that? We'll do the twinning, and, uh. Just sort of, we kind of sort of, so we have these dungeons out of the way. Um, before we really cut more into the, the main story.
It should go fairly quick depending on the players we have. And as I said before, the, these are the only two side dungeons in all of Shadowbringers. Every other dungeon that we have is a main storyline dungeon. Looks like we got a Samurai, a Machinist, and a Astrolog. Yeah, we can just eat the rope lettuce. That'll be fine. Samurai is closing the gate. Maybe, no, 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 they were building up their, their buffs and single targets, they have to. I shall give them the benefit of the doubt. just got here. Uh, the 80 cap. Samurai's been around for a while. Maybe they're just distracted. Now interestingly this uh, mechanical cyborg uh, minotaur, he has a physical move that he's going to do that can be silent. Tanking, keep your eye on him. Watch that. Where does he think he's done? He can't be. Sometimes Minotaurus can't be stunned. But I think it's only sometimes. These Zagnols or whatever are the Behemoth style monster from 13. I think all of these monsters, except for that Kalia, are uh, references to 13. But I'm not actually very versed in 13. I played it like I think about halfway through or maybe like 40% of the way through. My friends in college got it and that was the semester I stopped going to college. And, uh, I went to visit them and played it for like a weekend. And I got to where you get down to Paul and you start figuring out things like, oh hey, Paul is actually Earth. Other wildly spoiler casting spoilers. cells that have other diagonals in it. I guess these are cybernetically enhanced behemoths. It can stand on its hind legs and pull its like, forehead blade off. I guess what's kind of interesting about them is they're 
from the alternate future and technically are in our crystal tower right now back in the source in its face. So many. Wait, wait on my shield. Oh well. Those group stack markers look like group stack markers, but they're not really like important group stack markers. People are gonna group stack with you anyway because like they think that it's important, but like it's really not. Dark Knight had something that would force uh, direct crit. Like even for just one move, or like, I wish they got a trait at 80 or 78 or something that made carbon spit automatic direct crit. I feel like their their damage is really lacking compared to the other tank, even with the shadow. This doesn't look exactly elegant in nature. Ironworks data log. So, if I went through that a little fast, uh, honestly, I didn't read all of it. But, uh, We'll come back and read it at the end of the dungeon if we've got time or if I remember. But you notice it was Ironworks data, right? Like, and you remember back in that Echo Vision we had while we were asleep uh, that a guy who looked like Biggs came in to talk to uh, basically the person we know was was the XR Rahatia, and uh, well. But two, two and two together, basically the future ironworks. I mean, they told us explicitly, didn't they, already? But the future ironworks uh, is responsible for, you know, sending the crystal tower back in time through space and time. And this was basically their workshop. How they repurposed the crystal tower to do all this. You notice everything is sort of white and blue. Just the ironworks colors. Slightly easier is you can stun the um, vitalized reptoids because they buff their attack power. But if you use your cooldowns in the right order, that doesn't matter a whole bunch because eventually you're going to run out of stuns. Uh, and if if you don't have like if you have double caster or double range, they don't even have stuns anyway. So you only got the one. But uh, you know, it's it's worth it's worth mentioning. our astrologian is doing quite well. We need to get close to dying. I believe this is also a Final Fantasy 13 monster reference. But I'm not really familiar. Uh, 
now is laid on my face again. Sometimes tankbuster casts are a lot faster than they seem. You gotta really be on point with that sort of thing. the uh, temporal paradoxes catching up with it. That version of the Scion's copy machine.
a second. See a mega to the gateway? Mega's pocket dimensions? Another crystal tower? Artificial Enigma, the Tycoon. Is that a reference to Tycoon Castle or King Tycoon in Final Fantasy V? Because King Tycoon's name was Alexander Tycoon. And obviously you can see this ironworks construct is made in the shape of Alexander Prime. But entirely from, well almost entirely from, ironworks parts. Why are these models better safe than the top? Which, I mean, they didn't even, they didn't even lose HP, so I mean, it wasn't really, I mean, they're a little too safe there. Hmm. The portal's for you, buddy. Why is, why is Clyde sad again? He's been having a lot of frowny faces for, like, a lot of Shadowbringers. Alright, we got about, like, nine minutes left, so let's go back. I don't remember if there's any other, like, data logs that we didn't get, but there's a few to check out.
Not to mention, you can see that there's like carts and stuff in here. Like, I guess that's from the Crystarium. You know, that like they, they they told us that the Exarch allowed them to take anything they wanted from the tower. So they've been in here. And uh, big old crystal in the center here. It's like the basement of the crystal tower, rather than the. Uh, The other direction that we go in the 24 man. And clearly, the Allegans kept a lot of stuff down here. You said it was like a storehouse. It's also a mild reference. I mean, it's not really a reference, because this is pretty original, honestly. But in Final Fantasy III, the Crystal Tower had a basement with a mirror, and like, I think, I think it was actually just like one, one floor below ground level. And. Going through the mirror would take you to a, a cave system called Eureka, that, where you got all the super weapons and stuff, that and, and super magics uh, for taking on the Crystal Tower properly. All right, let's read that data log, shall we? Our only hope lies in the Crystal Tower, though it did not yield its secrets easily. Even opening the doors was a monumental undertaking. Without the Founder's data logs and the Noah reports left by the sons of St. Corniac, we would never have under or never had such a chance of succeeding. None of us were prepared for the spect spectacle that awaited us when we first stepped into the tower. To be surrounded by the marvels of a lost age took our breath away, and there at its center we found him. Him would be uh, Grahatina. Got all sorts of lights on in here still. There's like supply crates. I'm pretty sure that like this entire metal metallic structure here is is all ironworks built. Because you know it doesn't look like any of the rest of the Crystal Tower at all. It looks like it was brought in and created. Look, there's like a meeting room over there with like tubes and things. Our research into the Emperor's throne is almost complete, as we now understand the methods used to open a doorway to the world of darkness, otherwise known as the 13th. Confirmation! However, this is only the beginning of our plan. Even if we find a way to the first, it is already too late to prevent the 8th Honorable Calamity. For that, we must travel not only to another world, but to another time. Thankfully, the data logs gathered over the years detailing battles with various primals pointed us in the right direction. They say various primals, but they mean they mean Alexander, because he's the only only primal that we know of that can time travel. Just as we thought the pieces were in place, we came to the realization that traversing time and space has its difficulties. It is one thing to possess the technology necessary to enable such a feat, quite another to actually perform it. The interdimensional rift, as it was called in the Founder's data logs, is what I can only describe as infinite chaos. To navigate it would take expertise far beyond our kin. There, ha there was, however, once a being capable of exactly that, the one known as Omega. And yet, despite all the research carried out, the mystery of how it was able to cross the rift remains unsolved. Pretty sure it just took off and flew. I hope we get to, if there's any other day at the logs, we get to them before we leave. If not, it'll be okay. But we've only got like three or four minutes left in the recording, so. Tycoon's room, but possibly not. 
We got some data screens over here, though. I don't think they were on when we were fighting stuff. If they were, I didn't notice. There's, like, static on some others. Got a bunch of whirring gears still going. And look how similar this looks to one of, uh... Alexander's, um... You know, uh, like the room where we fought the oppressor and stuff. Oh, well, Clyde got three comms. How about that? I don't think there's any immediate cutscenes after this dungeon, so we should just load right back into the ocular. Oh, nope, it loaded us right back into the Crystarium. Oh, well, at least we were already in the Crystarium. Mm-hmm. Somewhat surprising, you say. Not being created by the Ronkins or any other known civilizations. Mm-hmm. Covered in an artifact, huh? Might be purely decorative, huh? Have you ever encountered anything like this? Oh, hey, look, it's the Omega Initiative thing that's in sitting in Ralgar's Reach currently. has come to carry out our plan. This will be my last recording. With the tower activated and the temporal displacement apparatus online, all that remains is to throw the switch and pray. Oh, I'm going to stop right here. Uh, well, as the video is going to cut in a minute here. So uh, thanks for watching. Stay safe and have a good day. And we'll pick right back up in just a minute, actually, because I'm going to start another recording immediately. But... Uh, Anywho, like and sub if you'd like, and I'll see you again.